Heading into day one of the NOCO six days here in Galicia, the riders were pleased to see clear skies for the third successive day after non-stop rain at the start of the week, leading in to race week. But even though the day was dry, conditions in the special stages were always going to be challenging for both rider and machine. Two laps of 125 kilometers delivered the riders to the three special stages, which therefore meant a total of six specials by the end of the day. 98th edition of the NOCO Six Days got underway at 8.30 this morning, just before sunrise, with Team USA's Johnny Guerrero and Cody Barnes leading the riders out, followed by teammates Josh Toth and Dante Oliveira one minute later. Team France followed on, but there were problems immediately for Team Great Britain when Harry Edmondson suffered a technical issue shortly after leaving the start. By the time the young Brit, who was originally entered in the Junior Trophy, got going, he had lost more than 30 minutes, which would have dire consequences for the team. Italy's Andrea Verona may have lost around 10 seconds on the opening lap, but was buoyed by his second fastest time in Stage 3, just one tenth off Josep Garcia's time, and at the end of the opening lap, Verona sat fourth in the overall standings. However, there was disappointment for the Italian shortly after leaving the service zone at the start of lap 2 when he suffered a technical issue and when he failed to show up at the next checkpoint, was confirmed as being out of the race. A tough blow for Andrea and for Italy. The form man on day one, though, was Spain's Josep Garcia. The KTM ace sat in second after lap one behind Holcomb, but got better as the day went on. The Spaniard took third, second and first in the first three stages and followed up with victory in stage four to take over at the top of the overall standings. By the end of the day, the 73 was the overall leader by nine seconds, the perfect way to start his home six days. With a mix of difficult conditions, the early pace setter in the World Trophy category was Steve Holcomb of Great Britain, who topped the times in the first two specials, the Enduro test and the Cross test, and after taking third in stage three, the Honda rider found himself leading by four seconds over Garcia. By the end of the day though, Holcomb had to be content with second overall after making one or two mistakes in stage four, which proved costly. The French had all four World Trophy riders inside the top seven after lap one, with Theo Espinas leading the way for his team. After the opening lap, Espinas was just 0.6 of a second behind Garcia in third overall. And after stage four, the Frenchman continued to hold third place, just two seconds behind Holcomb. With all three of his teammates filling the next three positions, France was well placed in the overall classification. Rounding out the top ten early on were three Americans led by Johnny Gruar, Josh Toth and Dante Oliveira. Toth fell in stage two at the end of lap one and the trio were all around 40 seconds off the pace at the end of the opening lap. Yeah, for sure it was a good day for me. I, I won the overall today. I had a small crash in the second course test, but uh, for sure I think everyone makes some mistakes today because the, the tests are really destroyed. And yeah, as a team I think uh, we finished third, I'm not sure, but uh, we make a good job. Uh, it's still a long week of racing, now we'll have a look uh, on the tests because uh, they are really de destroyed and tomorrow we need to, to push again uh, 100%. As we head into day two, France lead the USA by two minutes and five seconds, with Spain in third, almost 40 seconds further back. Australia a fourth, with Czech Republic rounding out the top five. On to the junior trophy now, and after Italy suffered a blow when Andrea Verona was forced to withdraw from the World Trophy, another cruel twist of fate was lurking just around the corner in the junior category for the Italians, as Manuel Verteroli was forced to retire after just two stages with another technical issue. Of course, it goes without saying that this has been a tough start to this six days for Italy. In Argentina last year, Sweden seemed nailed on for victory until the final day when they picked up a penalty which knocked them down the order. And who took the win as a result? Team France. And at the end of the day one here in Galicia, it's the same two teams who sit at the top of the standings once again. Sweden's Max Arlin led the way after the first lap and by the end of the day it was the Swedes who led the way by almost 15 seconds over the French, with Arlin's time marginally quicker overall than the best French rider. France ended the day second overall after solid performances from all three riders. Antoine Alex was their star performer but Leo Joyon and Thibaut Girardin provided great backup as they eye up a potential successful defence of the Junior World Trophy.
It's been a good day for the Team USA as well, as the trio of Matteo Oliveira, Grant Davis and Jason Tino ended the day a minute and 25 seconds off the pace. With two laps of the circuit and the three stages under their belts, you can bet the Americans will come out swinging on day two, as they chase a first junior trophy title since 2014. Italy's Kevin Cristino's times were on par with the best riders from Sweden, France and Australia. But after technical issues with Manuel Verzaroli, the best Cristino can hope for now is an individual class win. Uh, it was good. The team is leading and I think I took the overall in the junior as well after a tight battle with uh, Alex. And uh, yeah, we're feeling good. The tests are very demanding, but we are, uh, we are happy to be at the finish after the first day. Sweden lead the way with France hot on their heels. The USA sit third with Australia and Great Britain still very much in the hunt for a medal. Let's round out the day then with the women's trophy category and Brandy Richards of the USA had a bright start to the NOCO six days and led the women's trophy category after the first lap as the USA looked to defend the title they won last year in Argentina. Not the easiest conditions at times on the specials, but Richards got her head down to record the overall fastest time in the women's category. Rachel Gullish and Ava Silvestri held their nerve to ensure the Stars and Stripes topped the standings at the end of day one. For Silvestri, who's riding her first women's trophy on the six days, she knows she's in good company as both of her teammates arrive here as members of last year's winning team. The Australians have a great record in this competition, having won six times in a row from 2013 to 2018, with two of their three riders here this weekend. Taylor Jones and Jessica Gardner set the pace for the green and gold, with young 17-year-old Danielle McDonald doing a solid job providing backup. Sweden find themselves on the podium at the end of day one, with Emily Carlson, Linny Ackerson and Hedvig Malm. And heading into day two, the trio have a good margin over their closest rivals, France and Spain. Like all riders today, the Swedes will be hoping to fine-tune themselves and their machines, having ridden tomorrow's loop and special stages today. So it will be interesting to see how day two pans out. Yeah, it was a good day. Uh, started out a little rough. I had a few crashes and, um, you know, just trying to get used to this terrain. It's like surprisingly like super rocky and slippery. Um, you know, just uh, trying to stay consistent on the day. But as a team, we did really good. We stayed super consistent and uh, kept a lead for the day and just uh, super happy with, with how it went. There's still a long way to go, but defending champions, the USA are almost one minute, 40 seconds ahead. And with those day one nerves out of the way, we'll be hoping to build on the margin they currently enjoy. The Aussies and the Swedes, though, will be doing their best to keep them honest.